beneath the calm and tranquil waters of the pond, living things struggle to survive and reproduce their kind. Creatures are born, eat, and are eaten, reproduce, and die, part of the great continuing cycle of life and death. Winter brings a pause to the activities in the pond. Life slows, but doesn't stop. And then, in early March, even before all the snows have melted, the pond wakes from its winter sleep. Spring is a time of new life. Frogs mate. While mating, the male holds the female in a muscular grip called amplexus, during which he fertilizes her eggs as they are laid. He'll cling tight for the rest of the day, this ensures that no other male will fertilize his mate's eggs after his sperm is exhausted. Neither partner will eat or rest until amplexus is done. Frog eggs form in jelly-like clumps, while toad eggs emerge as long peppery strings embedded in jelly. But in both cases, the jelly swells up when it touches water and allows the eggs to float in the pond. In contrast to frogs and toads, newts mate without touching. Plain-colored females seek out males with fancy markings. Each pair retires to a private spot on the pond's bottom. The excited male gives off pheromones, enticing chemicals that he fans to his mate by wagging his tail. The pheromones trigger responses in her body that prepare her to be fertilized. The male releases his sperm in a neat white packet on the gravel. The female stands over it and draws it up into her own body. Once her eggs are fertilized, she lays them in private, one by one. The frog eggs will hatch early and the tadpoles will be first in line in the hunt for food. Each egg begins its development as soon as it's fertilized. Momentarily, it is a one-celled animal. But the cell divides, and divides again, every complex animal on Earth begins life in the same stately dance. The dividing cells take nourishment from the thin yolk that surrounds them. During the first day, the cells all look the same, but they divide rapidly. Now there are hundreds, thousands of tiny cells where there had been only one. The pond waters are still cold, but the energetic eggs and the sun's heat raise the jelly's temperature, and in this warmer environment, the cells begin to take different forms. A slit appears, which will soon fold into a tube. This will become the animal's spinal cord. In a week, the embryos are visible to the naked eye, and they are changing shape. A head has grown at one end of the spine, with bumps that will be eyes. Coiled inside are the tissues that will become stomach and intestine. At this time, most of the construction is internal. 
the embryo has no limbs at all. As nerve connects with muscle, reflexes begin to ripple through each tiny body. Suddenly, at the end of two weeks, the egg's food supply runs out. The eggs must hatch for the embryo to survive. Each embryo fights to break out of its egg sac and the dangerous sticky jelly. Tadpoles seem to be born too soon. How can they survive? They have tails, but no limbs or fins. They breathe through fragile, branching gills. They are defenseless. Now, out of all the masses of frog eggs laid in the pond, a quarter of a million tadpoles push off to search for food. Most will die in a few weeks, because even as they hatch, a dangerous predator is about to lay eggs nearby. The diving beetle injects her eggs into reeds and stems. Like tadpoles, when the diving beetles hatch, they will not resemble their parents. These are the young of the diving beetle. We call them water tigers. Even as infants, they prey on other inhabitants of the pond, including tadpoles. A water tiger has no jaws and no stomach, but its horns can inject stomach acids directly into a victim's body. The acid injection dissolves the victim's innards into a sort of protein syrup, which the water tiger sucks back into its own body through the horns. It dines upside down, breathing through a hole in its tail that pokes through the surface of the pond. When the victim's body is an empty shell, the meal is finished. No pond dweller is safe from a water tiger, not even another water tiger. Below the surface, the pond dwellers feed on each other, while at the surface, ducks feed on the pond dwellers. And above the pond, the air fills with thousands of gnats, and hot on their tails, a hungry dragonfly. Dragonfly forelegs are hairy nets that scoop up the tiny insects as they hover over the water's surface. Their wing muscles are so powerful and consume so much energy that they must bask in the morning sun for hours, warming their bodies until they are ready to fly. Damselflies are dragonfly relatives who carry their wings folded back rather than outstretched. A damselfly can eat its own weight in half an hour and must or die of starvation by mid-afternoon. Damselflies mate in the tall grass near the pond's edge. The male loops himself under the female. With a packet of sperm on his tail, he slowly fertilizes her eggs. Some damselflies lay eggs on the pond's surface, dropping them gently into the weeds below. Like frogs, 
Male damselflies hang on until egg laying is complete, protecting their genetic investment. But their delicate mating rains impending death on the tadpoles below. For damselfly and dragonfly eggs as well hatch into nymphs, pale, hungry creatures who prey on pond dwellers for as long as five years before emerging from the water as adults. Unlike water tigers, nymphs prowl the bottom of the pond looking for food. A hungry newt has its eyes on a nymph, but the nymph has a secret weapon. Watch again. The nymph's lower jaw is like a long arm with a club on the end. The newt will find its meal somewhere else. Green algae store solar energy. Tadpoles convert algae into animal tissue in the bodies of newts. That solar energy is about to pass farther along the food chain. In the pond, life and death are always interwoven. For a moment, the tadpoles turn from their normal diet of algae and eat what's left of their former enemy. Even in death, the newt has a place in the pond. Snails and other scavengers finish the job the beetle began. And the cycle of life continues. Tadpoles lost their external gills weeks ago, but they still take oxygen from the water like fish. For the lucky survivors, a final metamorphosis begins. Legs break through the skin tails are absorbed slowly into their bodies. Eyes poke above the surface. But the decisive moment is the opening of the lungs. When the lungs expand, the young frog must start breathing air. From the quarter million tadpoles that were born in early spring, perhaps 200 frogs escape the pond in August. And of these, only 20 will survive land predators and live to hibernate at first frost. A pond's surface looks calm and serene, but for its inhabitants, the pond is one of the most competitive environments on Earth. 